on this part of mechanics of engineering materials, basically we'll be dealing with Hooke's law and stress strain graph. What is stress strain graph? It's actually data that is derived or the data that is collected during a tensile test. A tensile test is actually a fundamental material science test in which a sample is subjected to a control tension until failure. A stress strain curve. What is the stress strain curve? It has stress on the y-axis and strain on the x-axis. And from this stress strain curve, we can get a lot of important information about the physical properties of materials, of a material. Now, stress against strain graph. Here, I have the vertical axis as the stress and the horizontal axis as the strain. And this is the stress strain curve. And at which the slope refers to Young's modulus, the slope of the line, which is the straight line within that two points, the initial two points, it refers to elastic modulus or Young's modulus. And the first section here refers to elastic, that means the material remains as elastic when it is stressed within its elastic limit. The second portion or second section of the graph refers to strain hardening and the third one refers to macking. The point that where the line remains straight is known as the elastic limit. That means the first two points. And the highest point on the graph actually refers to the ultimate tensile strength. And this point refers to ultimate stress, sorry. And this refers to the rupture stress, the moment when the test specimen undergoes a breaking. That means when it breaks. And this is called the upper U stress and the lower U stress. And from this, you can see I have a test specimen which undergoes tensile test. And the points that is marked initially is known as the original gauge length. And the second diagram refers to plastic deformation where the length has undergone an extension or the length has increased. The third diagram shows you the necking and the final diameter of the test specimen. Elastic limit. So whenever some external system of forces acts on a body, it undergoes some deformation. It undergoes some deformation. And if the external forces are removed, the body will restore or restores to its original size and dimensions. The body is said to be stressed within its elastic limit. Beyond this limit, the body is said to be plastic or semi-elastic, that is the strain hardening. Yield points, here for mouse view, it is clearly defined by the curve you can see upper yield and the lower yield. For mouse steel, you can clearly see the points between the upper and the lower yield. So a slight drop or increase in load, that is for the yield stress, a slight drop or increase in load at this point should cause further strain, giving a lower yield point and an upper yield point. Now, for the maximum or ultimate stress, is the maximum stress or load the material can withstand before necking starts to take place. So, when you refer back to the stress strain graph or curve, you can see the point that is denoted as A is at which 
the ultimate stress of the material and that is where the specimen will undergo a necking process until it rupture or it breaks at point B. So A refers to ultimate and that is where necking start to take place and B, the point B is at which this test specimen will undergo a failure or it ruptures. Okay, basically the slope CD that is marked here, the slope of CD actually refers to the Young's modulus. That is equivalent to stress over strain. That is equal to stress over strain. And Young's modulus is actually known as a, a material constant. Now, note, many materials do not have well-defined yield point as what we have for the mild steel just now, the strain uh, curve or the stress strain curve or the stress strain graph for mild steel, the yield points are well defined, but many materials do not have this. So the stress strain graph being more like that shown in the figure, just what I've said, in such instances, a proof stress has to be specified or is specified. The 0.2% proof stress is defined as the stress which result in a 0.2% offset. Example, stress given by a line drawn parallel to the linear part of the stress strain graph passing through the 0.2% strain value. So, I will show you here. That is the stress strain graph. Okay, for material which do not have a well-defined yield point or yield points. So first thing is you have to do what you have to do here is take 0.2% or 0.2 over 100 times the strain. So from that point, you draw a straight line which is parallel to the uh, curve until it intersect with the curve at the upper portion. So when it intersects, you can plot or you can put in a point here and draw a line horizontally across until it touches the stress axis. And this will give you the 0.2% proof stress for any materials which don't have a well-defined yield point. You have to do it this way. So for load against extension graph, the same thing, you have the elastic curve or the load against extension curve. So what you do here is, if you take 0.2% of original length, okay, you have 0.2% proof stress, which is equal to 0.2% of proof load divided by its original cross-sectional area. This is, these are only for material which don't have a well-defined yield point. So here, what you can do is you have to take 0.2%, that means over 100, multiply by the original line. And from there, you can draw a straight line, which is parallel to the curve. And then across, you have what we call the proof load. Okay. So this is an example of how to determine the proof stress and proof load for any materials which, again I repeat, don't have a well-defined yield point. Yeah, this section here we will be looking into what we call the factor of safety. So when designing machine parts or structural parts, it is desirable to keep the stress lower than the maximum or ultimate stress at which failure of the material will take place. This stress is known as the allowable working stress or we call it as a design stress. So this is the formula in order to determine the factor of safety for ductile materials such as mouse steel. 
Now, but in case of brittle materials, example alloy steels, non-ferrous metals, cast iron, the U point is not well defined as for ductile materials. The factor of safety for brittle material is defined as this. So you have to take the proof stress instead of the yield stress and divide it by the allowable working stress or the design stress. So most of the time, the factor of safety were given and the proof stress or the yield point or the yield stress will be given in order for us to determine what or determine what is the allowable working stress or design stress. Ductile materials. What are ductile materials and how to measure? Okay, in state, in terms of elongation and the percentage of reduction area. So you can use both of this formula in order to find the percentage elongation and percentage of reduction in area. So this is an example which will be recorded in the later slides. So in the later slides, will be uh, there will be examples or slides or videos that is showing how to solve problems. And this is a second example. And then the video regarding these two examples will be shown after this video. Thanks and please subscribe and share. Thank you. Thank you very much.